So we have to talk about how the aircraft handled and what were its strengths and weaknesses. Well, very interestingly, uh, Avro were asked to build a two-seat one-third scale aircraft, the Avro 707C, which we've actually got here at the museum. We took delivery of it from Cosford in November and we'll be putting it on display as soon as we possibly can. And that was built specifically for pilot training. But the aircraft was so docile, if I can use that word, it was elected not to use that and people just went straight into the aircraft and flew it straight off. Um, of course, you can't see anything of the aircraft, so um, you, could, you couldn't see the wings at all. Um, uh, it, so you had this interesting uh, uh, panel in the center of the instrument, uh, cent central panel, uh, so that you could see the position of your uh, flying controls. Um, it was, it, it was a, a lovely aeroplane to fly, though it did have its um, foibles because of its shape um, and the company had to produce uh, systems that got over the problems. Pitch dampers to get rid of a pitch issue, um, automark trim to get over the uh, longitudinal instability um, and your dampers to stop the uh, Dutch rolling. Mm. But of course when you turn those off these problems came back so we had limitations in our speeds. Mm -hmm. I heard it was really good up high, yeah, even against like something like a lightning that could outturn like the fighters at the time. Is there any truth to that? Well, absolutely. Well, when the aircraft was first designed in... Number two, please, for the Vulcan visit. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> right. um, when the aircraft was first designed in 46, 47, it was going to, it was envisaged, it was going to fly so high and so fast, it, no enemy aircraft could get near it. So there was no need for any defensive capability at all. But by the early 1950s, aircraft were going through the sound barrier, no problem at all. Yeah. And even here at Avros, they were building the experimental aircraft that could fly at 65,000 feet, doing Mark 2.5. So um, they realised that the Vulcan was going to be unbelievably vulnerable. But the aerodynamicists got together and they said, if we come up with this new wing, what they wanted to do was increase the wingspan from 99 feet to 111 feet, put a double kink on the leading edge, give it a droop leading edge, also change the power setting from 110 volts DC to 200 volts AC, change the flying controls at the back from elevons, sorry, from ailerons and uh, 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 elevators into elevons. So they all operated as uh, uh, ailerons and elevators in the ratio of five to four. Um, the, and of course they had a more powerful engine. Um, initially it was uh, 17,000 pounds of thrust each engine and then um, for the Skybolt aircraft it was going to go up to 21,000 pounds oh. of thrust. That was a lot of grunt and at high level we could outturn any fighters. They would just fall out of the sky. But of course development of um, weapon systems and aircraft meant eventually that uh, fighters didn't have to come in and get into combat. They could just stand off and fire their missiles from uh, uh, vast range mm -hmm. and uh, we had to have our electronic countermeasures in order to uh, try and uh, cloak where we were. I always wondered why they didn't put reheat on the Vulcan. Would it just not have worked or was it just not necessary? It was not necessary at that time. However, if Skybolt had worked and it had come into service, there was going to be a Mark III Vulcan built, which would have carried four of these Skybolts, and it would have had uh, an increased wingspan, 124 feet, I think it was. Uh, they would have had increased power uh, Olympus engines. Initially, the engine that would have gone into TSR two, and that would have had uh, reheat. That would have been one enormous great uh, aircraft, but. Skybolt didn't work, it was cancelled, and uh, that was just consigned to uh, history. What plane that would have been. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have, uh, I mean, uh, as it displays, it would have uh, oh, made yeah. a real impact. <laughs> Absolutely.